it's time for another Monster Monday story. Once again, this is part of a series of challenges, or prompts, done on Pixel Wolf's Twitch channel. The prompts this time were from Atelia97. The words were scales, fat, hungover, fangs, thorns, tired. Once more, if you're listening to this on the YouTubes, please do make sure that you check for the trigger warnings below the fold. Without further ado, Karma and Curses. They could hear the footsteps again. Casey crouched, staring just beyond their hands as they pulsed and twitched. They should just take the headset off, but to bring the things that had once been their hands near their face. The slow, thudding footsteps grew louder and louder, pausing outside the maze Casey had sprinted into. A low growl echoed through the air, followed by the steps moving onward. Casey let their head drop to their chest, pushing what had been their hands downward. They were so tired. Earlier. Casey smirked confidently at the pretty young woman who sat across from them. Oh, I don't get scared of anything. I've been playing horror games since I was a baby. They waved the bartender over for another round of shots, specifically requesting the brain hemorrhage. I've played all the latest from Resident Evil 7 to Silent Hills. The woman smiled at Casey, perfect white teeth shining in the dimly lit bar. Then I think you'd be perfect to test our new game. We've done everything except playtesting. We've tried, but none of our playtesters have done anything but scream when we pull them out. It's hard to get feedback that way. Casey wiggled through the low brush in the maze, army crawling as best they could through the sharp thorns that tore at their mud-stained clothing. They could feel a pounding in their head. Had it been long enough in the outside world that a hangover had started to kick in? It was hard to tell. Ahead, one of the things attached to their arms hissed and snapped at something in the undergrowth, and a moment later, something began to slide up his arm, a fat bulge that pushed the skin out in every direction. A whimper escaped Casey's mouth, and they continued to try and cut through the maze by working their way underneath the thorns. So what's this game called, anyway? Casey asked the woman as they went inside the large building. They'd pestered her until she'd agreed to let them try it out this very instant. The idea of a triple-A game going under the radar this long, but they'd get to test it out first. They had zero intention of keeping any non-disclosure agreement they were going to sign. After all, they were drunk. They couldn't be held responsible. Well, its working title is Karma and Curses, but I'm pretty sure the marketing department will change that before it ever sees the promos. She replied, waving a keycard and gesturing for Casey to go in front of her. The empty lobby echoed with their footsteps, a room mostly empty save for a few padded benches, an unstaffed reception desk, and a large obelisk-like statue Casey couldn't make heads or tails of. It was probably one of those modern art logo things. The woman sat them down at the desk, then handed them a paper to sign. Casey scribbled their name, then eagerly went to the testing room, jamming the headset over their head. Casey froze as they stared the thing in the center of the maze, a massive figure wielding a pair of scales balancing trays the size of a horse-drawn cart, stood in a river of twisting, grasping hands. Their head was like a vast crocodile, a lion's mane of limbs flowing to cover their chest. On the other side, Casey could see something that gave them further pause. Their hands. Their real hands were balanced, as if in prayer, close enough that they could make out the ring that they wore to keep off the creeps when they went bar hopping. Casey looked down at where they had been, and the twisting, turning maws whipped upward as if drawn by the sight, their fangs extending out towards them. Behind them, the footsteps grew louder once more. Casey was bored. What was supposed to be scary about this? It was some sort of rural village, clearly modeled after some sort of third-world desert people. Ancient times, maybe? 
though a huge tangle of briars rested right on the edge of the vast river that was visible no matter where they'd gone. They'd stopped paying attention to where they were going, and accidentally bumped into one of the various NPCs wandering around. They'd fallen over backwards, and as Casey turned to watch, they noticed that the person was gasping, having landed on a butcher's hook. Casey couldn't help but snicker. Oh, you can die, huh? They paused. Perhaps that's what I'm supposed to be doing? A reverse monster sort of thing? They grabbed a nearby cleaver and began to stalk the town. The people seemed to die more and more comically each time, with the last one letting out a classic Wilhelm scream. Well, that was kind of funny, at least. The words died in their throat as a rushing sound came from where the body had fallen, a green-black glow flowing into the shape of a bird with a long, sickle-like beak, which whipped forward, slicing their hands off before they could react. It seized them in its talons, flapping away. Casey waited for the game over screen, but instead the severed stumps began to twitch, and teeth like a hagfish began to explode out into long, lethal-looking fangs. The more they looked at them, the worse they got, twisting and twitching towards Casey's face. Ah! They stumbled backwards and looked around frantically for a moment. W wait, it's just a game. All I have to do is take the headset off. They began to raise their arms, only for the stumps to lash out towards their face, blood pooling from them as the flesh cracked to let the jaws expand. Okay, okay, bad idea, bad idea. They heard a noise behind them, and saw an approaching figure. A lean hound head on the body of a man walked towards them, one hand swishing a flail, each tail of the weapon beaded with tiny human metal heads. It spotted Casey and turned, jaws opening to reveal a lupine grin, and in a gait that had to be a tribute to Pyramid Head, began to stroll towards them. Casey looked at where the jackal-headed man was, then to where the crocodilian figure was in front of them. They ran forward, now in a blind panic, grasping at the plate of the scales nearest to them as best they could with the aggressive remains of their arms. The chains that held it creaked, hands reaching up from the river to grasp at them. Casey struggled desperately on the golden platter, and let out a sigh of relief as it began to even out with the other. From this vantage point, they could see a doorway beyond, a shining blue portal that was surely the exit to victory. As they stood and prepared to leap, however, the bird landed on the other side, then another, and another, and another, until a flock of spectral ibis that numbered the same as the NPCs they had wiped out began to weigh down the other side of the scales, bringing Casey level, then tipping into the maw of the crocodilian figure where a set of jaws not unlike the ones that had opened on their arms spread wide to greet them. I hope you enjoyed that. Today's art is by Liberty Yanga, or Liberty Loves. You can find her at the website linked below. I hope